I did, like I said, several years of security and the wages mixed with the politics mixed with dealing with people just kind of sent me into the wrong mind space. And my last year, I basically had a mental breakdown and almost lost a lot of friends. And it just scared me that I, you know, if, if I could have a mental breakdown doing something like security, I didn't want to have a gun. Hey, fellow workers, thanks for tuning back into another episode of the Alberta Worker Podcast. This is episode five of season three. We are a proud member of the Labor Radio Network, as well as a member of the Harbinger Media Network, broadcasting from the territory of the Nitsitsapi. And I am pleased to welcome today's guest, Brett Galloway Johnson, a courier here in Lethbridge. Welcome, Brett. Thank you. Glad to have you. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and go straight into uh, having you tell us your life story, you know, where you grew up, what your family life was like, where you went to school, that sort of thing. And then also share with us your personal labor history. That could be like your first job, subsequent jobs, what you're doing now, the journey you took to get there. And you can either intertwine those or you can start share them separately. Totally up to you. But the floor is yours. I uh, was born in Vegreville, Alberta, lived a very short time of my life there. I was adopted by my parents. And they took me to Claire's home. I lived on a farm for most of my life. Well, I shouldn't say most of my life anymore. I, that part of my life is a little ways back. You're getting too old now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see. I went to high school, all three schools I went in Claire's home. Claire's home elementary and then West Meadow middle school was grades four to eight and grades nine to 12. I went to Willow Creek Composite High School. Okay. I excelled in sciences and mathematics. Actually, I uh, did my best in grade eight when one particular teacher actually took more interest in me. They wanted to say I had a lot of mental disabilities and not a lot of mental disabilities, but I was diagnosed with ADD, which now is... ADHD. Right. Turns out I didn't have it because I did better off of the medication than I did on it. Yeah. yeah um, I did a lot better when the teachers actually started taking an interest in me. Right. Uh, I was in football for five years, two years of Bantam, uh -huh. seven, eight, high school, 10, 11, and 12. So I guess Bantam was eight and nine, not seven and eight. Um, sorry, I have to think back. What position did you play? Right defensive tackle. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, had a lot of fun there. See, when I graduated from high school, I moved to Lethbridge. I went to Lethbridge College. I got my diploma in criminal justice, majoring in policing. And then I worked security for a few years. I, I want to say at least three years. I can't remember the exact time frame, but after I had a bit of a mental breakdown in security, I went back to college and got my diploma in business administration, majoring in accounting. Okay. Did you try and apply with a police service or were you planning on just going into security out of college? I had wanted to apply at a police service and it was the LRPS at the time, mm -hmm. but the recruiting officer told me that I should take CJ first to see if it's what I really wanted to do. And having an education in the field is right. helps. And so after your diploma, did you apply there? No, I did, like I said, several years of security and the wages mixed with the politics mixed with dealing with people just kind of sent me into the wrong mind space. And my last year, I basically had a mental breakdown and almost lost a lot of friends. And it just scared me that I, you know, if, if I could have a mental breakdown doing something like security, I didn't want to have a gun, you know, like, so. Yeah, I get that. Had you intended on going into a police service straight out of college? Or were you just thinking, I'm just going to go straight into security? I didn't know what I wanted to do. Sorry, I did a I did a semester of university first. And when I didn't really do too well there, someone I was living with, my landlord at the time, I guess, was talking about how, quote unquote, easy he thought it was to get into policing. And I thought, well, you know, not that it's easy to get in, but it was something I wanted to do, not policing, but helping out, you know. I wanted to help people out. My first university was uh, kinesiology with the intent of moving on to becoming a physiotherapist. Okay. And just the the courses just overwhelmed me, you know, yeah. and I, I yeah. wasn't as interested in it as I thought. Okay. Yeah. So you went to the college to get business administration in accounting? Yes. I had the intent of becoming an accountant until I got to the university and that wasn't 
what interested me, even though I did amazingly, like I got low to high 90s in all my accounting courses. Oh, cool. They were the best courses I did at college. I don't know if I lost interest in it when I got to university, but my main goal once I was at college was to start a business at some point. Here I am now. I started a small courier business. You went straight from, you know, doing some university accounting classes into doing your business? Uh, no, sorry. I went back to security for a short time because it was the only reliable work I could find. Right. And I had the experience. And then I wouldn't want to say I was experiencing the same amount of stress, but I dealt with peace officers and there was a particular situation that scared me away from it. Working with people that I was supposed to trust, an email leaked out. Oh. And a, a certain officer got a hold of it and confronted me about the contents of the email. And that's when I got scared away from it. <laughs> oh, okay. A, I was supposed to be able to trust my coworkers, and B, I was supposed to be able to trust the people that were overseeing me. Right. At least that's what they taught you at the college. Yeah, that's what they taught me at the college, yeah. Every security role I had, I ended up as a supervisor, and I could never quite get above it. So then you just went from security into starting your business. There were a couple gap jobs in between. One of them, I got uh, laid off. I don't know if this is why he fired me, but... I asked them about expanding within the company. And then a month later, I got fired. Oh, what do you mean by expanding within the company? I wanted to get into sales and eventually into some form of management within the company. Oh, I see. It's so like personally expanding your skill set and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Moving up, I guess, in the company. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, no, I get it. Kind of in between the security and there, I started off in Claire's home working at a video retailer called The Video Place. It was a rental store oh, okay. um, there almost all my high school. Loved it. Like I said, I, I didn't get to a supervisory role, but I got into a role that the business owner trusted me a lot. He trusted me with overseeing the Vulcan branch. Oh, wow. He gave me a few higher things to do, like shuffling movies. It, it, it's not a very involved job, but, you know, like shuffling movies around at the end of the week. And sure. after that, I worked at Tim Hortons for a bit. I had a lot of different jobs at college and university. I worked at the Lethbridge College okay. for a while doing their windows, um, which I absolutely loved. Washing the windows or installing Yeah, I washed them? their windows every summer, yeah. Oh, which, okay. believe it or not, took half a summer to do. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. The inside and out or just the outsides? Uh, outside first, and then I would help on the inside Okay. During my last month, uh, because I would be basically finished, I would help out with the summer cleaning. Um, and I, I loved that job. Like waxing the floors and whatever. Oh no. I wouldn't have trusted myself on the floor waxer. <laughs> <laughs> it probably would have destroyed something. Let's see, I worked at Lowe's for a bit. Okay. And then that just ended up kind of being a summer job. Had no real aspirations of continuing on um in there. Most of my experience is in security though. I did a lot of years with three different companies. Each of them were basically the same <laughs> experience, a lot of stress, yeah, very little pay. Yeah. And that brings me to owning my courier business. Okay. And when did you start that? Uh, last April, actually. Oh, so just to, like a year or so. We're fresh. Okay, cool. I spent quite a bit of time working for a courier company. I did three years in Vancouver and then a year here in Lethbridge. And so how's it been going for you? It's been going really well, actually. They say starting a business takes time to get clients and everything, and that you would take an average of three years to actually be making money. Right. We started making money after the first year because I got it off of another guy who was really well-respected. Okay. So I created our courier. He sold me his customer list and gave me recommendations with all of his customers, and then he retired, and I basically just took over. You started your own company, and then after you started your company, he gave you all his business. Yeah. Okay, so you like basically merged the two companies. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Okay, and was it, it just him, or did he have employees as well? He did it by himself. Okay. All right. I didn't want to quite take on the work like that. So I started it and because of the way it ended up working out just with availability of appointments and everything, I had to start it as a, a sole proprietor. And then I just added my wife as an employee, but we run it together. So sure. yeah, if I would have been able to do a partnership, I would have, but yeah, it's like 50, 50, you both do all the work. Yeah. Cool. And so it's going pretty well. 
yeah, I'm enjoying it. So you focus on like commercial work or do you like cartage and stuff? We do a lot of, yeah, commercial stuff, mostly construction supplies and plumbing supplies. Oh, basically we have six customers on the North side right now. So. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Huh? Yeah. The courier company I worked for here in Lethbridge. I mean, they don't exist anymore. It's been almost 30 years, well, almost 25 years, I guess. They did messenger and cartage. So like they would do moving and they had a partnership with what was then called Canadian Freeways. And they would go and pick up their inner city deliveries. So they would bring in the stuff from the train and then they would have a bunch of loading docks and then, you know, local couriers would come in and pick it up and then just go deliver it to local. So that's what I did. I just had to run every morning. Basically, I would pick up my stuff in the morning and all morning I would deliver. After lunch, I would deliver for two or three hours and then I would have an afternoon run. I would pick up the same clients and then bring it back to team freightways or whatever. So, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's pretty busy. Yeah. I kind of miss it. What you do? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. It didn't pay very much. Actually, it was the best paying job I had had in Lethbridge up to that point. So I, I didn't mind it too much. It was only $8 an hour, but I hadn't made $8 an hour in Lethbridge before then. So it was, I was, it was pretty yeah. good. Plus I got, actually, I think it was my first full-time job too in mm -hmm. Lethbridge. All the other ones had been part-time jobs at the point because I had been going to school and stuff. So yeah. But yeah, it was, it was pretty good. It was nice to have some, some money for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then... Not a career company, but I did work for H and R Transport as a fleet manager. So I didn't drive for them or anything, but it's sort of related. Oh. I do miss being in logistics, but yeah, I don't know. That was that was really stressful. But this is about you, not me. So I don't know if it's just Lethbridge in general, but it is hard to find a good paying job here, and and it's really clicky. Like like you have to know someone where you're applying. It seems, and that's what a lot of people tell me is you need to know somebody to actually get a decent job. Yeah, and even that's not a guarantee. Like the last three really good jobs I've, I've applied for, I knew the person in each instance who was doing the actual hiring and who I would be reporting to if I got the job. And I still didn't even get interviews. Yeah, it's difficult, that's for sure. Yeah, it's it's tough in Lethbridge. There's a really tough market out there. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So now we're at where you are now. Yeah. Cool. So you said you were adopted. Were you an only child growing up? No, I had a sister who was also adopted. Oh, okay. And what is she doing now? Uh, she lives in Red Deer. She worked as a controller for a while. Oh. <laughs> and uh, now she works in an accounting department somewhere. Okay. Hmm. Can't remember where, but yeah. Maybe it runs in the blood, the accounting. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. She has a diploma actually in, um, I don't know if it's special education or just special needs um, oh. assistance. Anyways, she did a special needs assistance for a while and then she got a job as a controller and then she got a job with a not-for-profit. And, and I told her that, you know, her life just kind of met because the not-for-profit is for special needs. So oh, <laughs> she works in the accounting department. So that's super handy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about your parents? What did they do? Uh, my mother was a nurse and my father uh, farmed for almost all of his life. Right. Okay. Oh, cool. And your mom worked at the hospital in Clairsville? Yes. She worked at Continuing Care Center, it's called now, but it used to be called the Auxiliary uh, Care Center. Okay. That's cool. And is your dad still farming? Uh, no, they retired. He okay. sold BSE crisis, hurt him for cows. Right. After that, you know, a lot of the land just turned into sand from planting. I, I guess, I don't know what did it, but so he had to sell to his neighbors. Oh. Actually, they did a really good job recouping it. So they're actually pretty successful on, on dad's old land. Oh, okay. And would he, did he run a cattle operation? For a while. He had a 20, this was a really long time ago but 20 sounds familiar to me head of cattle which isn't a whole lot but it's oh, pretty small yeah yeah okay and did he like do crops or anything as well yeah he did okay. do crops yeah okay yeah and then just couldn't keep up with the technology you know right it was everything farmers. was getting too expensive and and everyone else was getting irrigation and it just couldn't <laughs> he was doing dry land farming yeah okay and that can be tricky too, because you have to depend on the weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was actually funny. This a running joke is that uh, it rains everywhere except for their house. Because <laughs> you could drive for like a mile and a half and all of a sudden you'd get rain and it would be like a mile and a half in every direction. There'd be all of a sudden no more rain just surrounding 
their house. It would just rain <laughs> on all the irrigated farms. <laughs> exactly. That's funny. And you and your sister, you had chores on the farm growing up? Yeah, I ran the tractor for a while and uh, helped dad with as much as I could understand with mechanic stuff. So I guess my first job was farmhand because it was for the family, right? Right. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that was me too. Like I would help my dad on construction sites when I was younger, just like clean up and stuff. But I usually don't count that because I wasn't paid. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, cool. And do you and your spouse have any children? Not yet. We're working on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, a question that I ask all of my guests is how has your intersections of marginalization ever influenced your experiences as a worker? Okay, I can't say I ever really had very many um, problems. Uh, sure. Some people say it hasn't, so. Yeah, it, I haven't really had any issues. It, it's mostly the uh, intersection between um, age and experience is the, the biggest thing that's affected me. Or... Education and experience, I guess, would, would I should say more than, than age and experience. I just found that when I was younger, I didn't have enough education or experience to get the job. And now that I have it, nobody wants to hire. Yeah. <laughs> For some yeah, reason. No yep. All right, cool. Yeah, and that's totally fine. Some people, you know, they don't really have marginalization in their lives. And so it's not really an issue. And you said you were diagnosed with ADHD when you were younger? Yes. I remember being in a uh, psychologist's office and my parents were talking and uh, they interviewed me and it ended up being that they said I had ADD at the time, which now is ADHD. Right. And they put me on Ritalin and my grades didn't get any better. I got taken off again and my grades got better and it was more just the teacher's interest in helping and stuff like that which can help with adhd because part of the issue with adhd is difficulty focusing on particular tasks if you have guidance from a teacher that can you know that can make a difference in helping you focus so yeah i guess and i i do tend to really focus on things that most like i'm highly interested in math and that's why i did so well in accounting of course you know so yeah and do you think ADHD has played any sort of a role in your experiences in the workforce? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, like I said, I'm not even sure if I have ADHD or not. My okay. wife is convinced that I do. So maybe, maybe I do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. That's cool. Do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Well, I, I really want to say is be yourself, keep positive And as cliche as it probably sounds, if you work and uh, do stuff that you enjoy, eventually it'll work out. I, I don't say, I shouldn't say that. It's a, shouldn't really make promises, but yeah. I wouldn't have gotten here if I wasn't a hundred percent focused on what I wanted for myself versus what other people wanted. Sure. So. All right, cool. And if people are interested in following you, do you have anywhere they could do that? Public social media accounts or websites or blogs or anything? I, I do have my Facebook. I don't have a lot of friends on it. I guess find me on Facebook. They can. It's Brett Galloway Johnson. Okay. Uh, Brett and Galloway Johnson to make it easier to search me. But yeah. All right. Cool. That's fine. Yeah. And if people are interested in following the Alberta Worker, you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also check us out at our website, albertaworker.ca. And while you're there, you might as well sign up for our newsletter. We have daily, weekly, and monthly options. If you like this particular interview with Brett, please rate and review this episode. Uh, if you want to support the Alberta Worker podcast, you can just go to our website, albertaworker.ca slash support. Remember, the Alberta Worker, including this podcast, depends on the financial contributions of our valuable listeners, just like you. If you want to be a guest on the Alberta Worker podcast, please email us at podcast at albertaworker.ca or drop us a DM on any of our social media accounts. Thanks so much, Brett, for joining us today. And thanks to all the listeners for joining in and listening. And as always, solidarity.